Hey guys, welcome to Art Tips number 46. And what we're gonna be covering today is fur for parallel processing. So this is an awesome package um, that I use quite frequently when I want to speed up my calculations. So if I'm doing a lot of iterative calculations, uh, we can do what's called running in parallel. Okay, so to get started today, what we need to do is sign up for the Art Tips newsletter. Uh, I've got a link right here. It's also in the video notes. And what we're going to do is once you get signed up, it'll give you access to our GitHub repo where you can download the code that you're going to see today. So we're going to do git pull. That's going to pull in the code. And uh, you'll see if you go to the file tab, uh, we have all sorts of uh, these R tips. Uh, we're going to be working out of R tip 46. Uh, just open this file up. It'll open up right here and then you can open up the outline to follow along. So the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna load in some libraries. I'm gonna load in these libraries. So we're loading in the Tidyverse, TimeTK, Luberdate for working with dates, Fur for parallel par processing using the future library. And uh, we'll talk about that here in a second. And uh, the library TikTok. So the next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna load in some data. This is going to be our sales data. So we're starting with this data frame, Walmart Sales Weekly, which comes from my time TK package. We're gonna select the ID, date, and weekly sales columns. Uh, just select those down, control enter, and then we're gonna set these names to ID, date, and value. So uh, that'll get standardized. We're gonna save it as the sales data tibble. Once we have that saved, we're ready to start our processing, but first what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to do a linear regression model uh, doing what's called a nested data frame structure. So you'll see there's this tick tock and we're gonna be using in the section here per and everything between um, what we're gonna be doing is taking our sales data and we're gonna use this function first called nest and we're gonna nest the date and value columns into a column called data so what this is gonna do is it's gonna take our time series and condense them. So this data column now, now contains the date and value for each of the IDs that are in here. Um, and we can see that there's several IDs, uh, one underscore one, one underscore three, one underscore eight. And what we're gonna do is we're going to iteratively model each one of these date and value combinations. So um, what we're gonna do here, we've got this nested data frame. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use mutate to add another column uh, to the right here of data. And we're gonna map a function. So um, we're gonna take the data column, which is right here, and we're gonna map a function that I'm creating inside of this mutate. And we're gonna tell it to sleep for one second and then perform a linear regression on this data set. Um, so this is going to be a long running script. Uh, it's going to take like seven seconds because we have this uh, sys.sleep. And uh, we're going to just model value as a function of the date column. And we're going to create the month and as numeric as our features. So when I run this and do the tick tock, it's going to take seven seconds because we've got seven different time series here. And I'm sleeping for one second each time we run through this and it takes 7.04 seconds. So it's a long running script and we're simulating with the system time and it's performing this linear regression. So we just made a model for each one of these uh, sub data sets. Okay, so we've got seven different linear regression models, took seven seconds. Now what I wanna do is I wanna show you how easy it is to set up fur for parallel processing. So we use this function map from the per library. Um, when I scroll down here to the second section, this is the beauty of fur. Uh, what we can do here is we set the plan equal to multi-session and I have six cores on my computer. So I'm gonna set my workers to six. It'll take a second to run. And what that does is it sets you up for running in parallel. Um, the next thing, I'm just taking the same script that I've got here, this tick tock, um, and I'm gonna paste that down here, but I'm gonna change out this function from fur map to future map, future underscore map. So fur, they call it fur because it combines this thing called futures with per. Uh, so all of the per functions like map have a future underscore map variant. And when I run this, if I hit control and enter, we're gonna see it gets, it completes much, much faster. So we're at three seconds. So it's definitely a lot faster than the seven seconds that it took us. So we're getting roughly seven by three, 
uh, 2.3 times speed up, um, which is which is uh, pretty good. If we have even more calculations, though, that speed up will become even better and better. So um, that's the advantage of using FUR for parallel processing. All right, so um, that, that there we have it. That's FUR for parallel processing. If you want to learn more about R beyond just what we've covered here, about how to do iterative modeling, how to do um, parallel processing, how to do machine learning, and so on, I do have a five-course R track, and this is will take you from beginner to expert in six months. If you're interested, check it out the link in the video notes. We cover all sorts of data science, including um, how to get started with R. There's five courses. The first course is getting started in R. The second course is um, your machine learning. Third course, time series. Fourth course and fifth course are building shiny applications. So you learn both dashboards and also how to make full stack shiny web applications that are hosted on AWS and use Docker and Git. So um, check that out if you're interested in learning more. And uh, we'll see you again in a couple of weeks for another R-Tip. See ya.